Oh my god! Oh my god! All right, so in the last video you saw us take the truck to the track. The best time with the new engine was 1408 at 96, which is pretty close to the best time with the old good engine, uh, which definitely tells me that that old engine was hurt for a while because that thing was 11 to one compression. It had a bigger cam, better intake. And this one's 9.3 to one. And this engine has the same carbon heads, still a one inch spacer, but it has a smaller cam and a dual plane intake. So on paper, the old engine should have made a pretty good amount of more horsepower. This one, I think like at the crank, it might be making like 350, which would put it like in the 280, 290, maybe 300 at the wheels kind of zone. So I don't have like huge expectations for this thing, but I do think like if we can get it good and repeatable and stuff on motor, if we could get it like 13.6, 13.7 on motor, we might be able to spray it to like low 12s. And I think that'd be pretty cool for a really, really doable, repeatable budget setup. We really don't have too much into this truck. But now that I got the fresh plug in it, and I turned the timing back two degrees, I messed with the accelerator pump slightly. I put the accelerator pump at the top hole closest to the carburetor. So I'm just gonna take this truck down the road real quick, turn around, get on it on the way back, and then pull the plug out and see how it looks. Ideally, what you'd wanna do is put the plug in, make the pass right there, and then turn it off, come to a stop, pull the plug out, see what it's looking like. But since this truck isn't exactly legal, uh, I'm going to have to kind of drive it to a spot that's clear and open and relatively safe, and, uh, and then bring it back here and pull the plug out. So not ideal, but it's what you gotta do. So that didn't take long. It has a little bit of like a misfire going on. I think we're gonna have to put some new plug wires on it because those two where that crossover kind of deal is. These two, they like to get singed, so we might be putting some new wires on it. But let's pull the plug and see how it looks. All right, let's see, out in the light. So there isn't really like a clear timing mark on it. You can see again how like the end looks a little weird. And there's a little bit of discoloring here towards the base. I don't know, there isn't a clear timing mark. There's this random speck there. I don't know how it's gonna look on camera. You can see a little bit of discoloration right here towards the base more. Maybe it just has all this like fuzziness at the end because it's so lean. Might have to go to a colder plug and fatten it up a touch. Not really sure. I don't know how well you can see it. It does look like there's discoloration for a timing mark real close to the bottom there. Unless I'm just misreading this. But that's what it looks like to me. But when we put the two extra degrees in it yesterday, it didn't like it. That could just be because it's running out of fuel. It could be because the vacuum advance wasn't hooked up. Maybe we should just put the locked out distributor in it. 
the easiest thing to start with is putting two more degrees in it now that the vacuum advance is hooked up see if it still stumbles like crazy um, the two degrees on the other plug put the timing mark almost perfectly I don't know I don't know if I've showed that yet this video but yeah there's the old plug and you can see the mark like right at the apex of the strap there I think just to go kind of like process of elimination easiest to hardest we'll start by putting two more degrees back in it with the vacuum advance hooked up see how it does then and then we'll probably and then if that still sucks we'll probably put in the locked out distributor probably started at like 34 that should probably be safe for lower compression aluminum heads and then really the only thing we can do after that is just put more fuel in it but we have to wait for the uh, the calibration kit for this Edelbrock to show up I know someone's gonna come and put the holly back on it but that needs to be completely gone through because something was wonky as shit on that so I think I'm just gonna start with the easiest thing to do first which is putting two more degrees in it Part of our problem. This is the pulley that we had on the engine just now, and this is the one off the old engine. And both of the uh, the keyways here are pretty close. And then look at how different the timing marks are on them. And the cover that we have on the engine is the cover from this one. The one with this one is over there. So we're gonna put this uh, balancer back on, and that should hopefully cure our timing retardedness. Yeah, that's something we didn't even think about when we were putting it together is that the uh, timing marks from one front cover to the other is gonna be different. So, uh, live and learn, but I'm really thinking that that was probably part of our issue why we were having such a hard time controlling what the timing was doing. So now that we can get it actually confirmed with TDC, we, uh, we should be good. All right, got the new balancer on it. And we did verify by rolling it over and feeling the piston come up that it is correctly reading top dead center now. So that's cool. So now we can reset the timing yet again. We're good. It's right at 16. I uh, thought about leaving it at 14, but I mean, <laughs> it was at like 25. We'll lock down the distributor, hook the vacuum advance back up, throw one more fresh plug in it, and then take it down and see how it liked it. Okay, fresh plug is in. We only have one fresh plug left. <laughs> I'd like to save that for the track. Well, actually, I'd like to save that for after we get this thing rejetted. Um... Distributor's locked down, vacuum advance is hooked back up. I think we're good to make another quick little test run with it. And hopefully, hopefully we're golden. Well, let's see how he starts now. Just got back, got the plug pulled already. So you can definitely see the discoloration down here. And uh, I think it could use a couple more degrees. Obviously just have to throw some more fuel at it. The, the pole felt consistent, so I don't wanna change too much now. Throw some more jetting at it. I'm surprised that it didn't have like incredibly obvious pinging with that much timing in it. That's crazy to me. Uh, or maybe we just didn't notice it. I don't know. I wasn't driving it. <laughs> so, I think that's probably going to do it for today's video. 
Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. We'll see you next time.